when I identified as being Aboriginal to people because I'm fair skinned, the response I would get would often be, but you're not really Aboriginal. And I thought, people want to deny my heritage because I don't look like the stereotype that they want to see. So I took portraits of myself and my family and I turned us into the stereotype that everybody wanted by painting our faces black and putting red headbands on us. I'm a descendant of the Wathaurong people here in Victoria. I studied photography at TAFE for a couple of years, which gave me a really strong grounding in all of the technical aspects of photography, such as cameras, lighting, composition. As an artist, I make very political punchy works, things that break down stereotypes, that look at how people perceive Aboriginal people. That's a really big passion of mine. To be chosen as a curator for the Melbourne Arts Festival has been a real honour. I have to admit that I was kind of terrified <laughs> at first, but at the same time, my passion is contemporary Aboriginal art, and so I have a really good, solid understanding and foundation around what's out there, the artists that are practising, and of course, what I like. When I started to curate the show, I wanted the show to have a voice and I wanted that voice to speak about spirituality, Aboriginal spirituality in an urban setting, loss, grief and death. And so I, I looked around amongst my contemporaries and peers for works that spoke about those things. I'm standing in front of an installation by an artist called Marie Clark, who's a Victorian Aboriginal artist, and it was really important for me to have a strong base of Victorian Aboriginal art in the exhibition. And, and what it's about is about um, a traditional mourning ceremony that was practiced by women in communities whereby when a man would die, um, the women would cut their hair off, cover their heads with animal fat and build big white clay caps on their heads that would signify the weight of their grief that might weigh up to about seven kilos. And so the weight of your grief was sitting there on your head. You couldn't escape it, you couldn't run away from it, you couldn't go into denial. At a certain point after the mourning period, the caps would be removed and placed onto a burial mound so that you would have a release of your grief at that point. A really beautiful, healthy pro process that highlights how inadequate our grieving processes are today. I'm standing in front of Fiona Foley's beautiful prints called the HHH, which stands for Hedonistic Honky Haters. And this is a series that I've been aware of for a long time. It was made around 2006, and it's one of my all-time favorite artworks. And when um, I, I was beginning to curate this show, I decided that it would speak really well within the context of the show because it's like a religion in itself. When somebody joins a cult or something like that, it becomes their philosophy and their life and their spirituality. And the way that Fiona has portrayed this as a subversion of racial hatred, as black people hating on white people, it's just something that's very playful, very cheeky, and something that really, really appeals to me. This piece behind me is by an artist called Ioani Skars. She's an artist from South Australia who lives and works in Melbourne and she makes all of her artwork out of hand blown glass, which is really unique for an Aboriginal artist to be working in this medium. This particular work is um, looking at a number of different things. Uh, it's looking at deaths in custody, um, police brutality, that kind of stuff. But for me, what it really speaks about is the impact of mission life on Aboriginal families, life and culture. And it's one of my favourite works. I think it's so powerful, so strong and so poignant.